glass of water. Does anyone at the bar feel generous enough to run me up a glass of water? Richo, you'll do it for me, won't you? No, he'll load it with spirits. That's his problem. I had... Uh, thank you, Steve. Right. Well, give him a round of applause. Not only is he handsome, he's produced some pretty talented daughters as well. I had a pretty long apprenticeship in the music business. Uh, it looked like it was all going to happen when I was like 17 and I was touring with, with everybody and uh, you, uh, some artists mentioned was like Bill Cosby, Dave Allen, uh, Peter Allen, Liza Minnelli and uh, I, I'd done some recording with Chris Christopherson who was the most generous human being I'd ever come across and uh, but it was like I, I didn't connect with a song in the marketplace so uh, I keep saying that I just maintained my apprenticeship and that went on from 1974 to 1988. It was like probably one of the longest apprenticeships in the business. Um, but the break came for me in 1984 when Slim Dusty recorded a song that I'd written. Yep, that's what I, that was my response as well, Anna, there's no doubt about it. And he recorded a song called I'm Married to My Bulldog Mac. Which goes to show you'll write anything when you're hungry. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was a leg in and, and uh, his producer Rod Coe rang me straight after uh, Slim had accepted Bulldog Mac and, and said, have you got anything else? And of course, what am I going to say? Yes, of course I have. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really, I hadn't planned on being a sort of a country songwriter. I just wanted to write songs that told stories. And, Anyhow, my experience as a child um, came in good stead because uh, Slim was looking for a song with a, some sort of trucking story. And um, as a kid, one of our favorite things to do was travel with my father on the rail motors up the Pioneer Valley of a Saturday afternoon. Or maybe we'd get up to Proserpine or we'd go down to Carmilla. And it was one of those things that uh, you know, every father is a hero for a period in a son's life. And that was the time when he was like, my hero. Oh, Dad, I'm out with on a free ride on the train. Anyhow, I translated that emotion and that, that sort of feeling to a song about a young boy travelling with his dad on a truck for the first time. And Slim recorded it. And strangely enough, with the number of um, compilations that Slim had, and my own recording of the song on the album Homeland, it probably, of all my songs, is actually the highest selling song, which is sort of weird because everyone thinks of A Little Further North and all those songs, We've Done Us Proud. But this song, Diesel in Dreams, has just uh, been on so many different compilations. And I should actually pay I should thank John Wolfe for convince, convincing me to put this on the new double CD 60 Summers. Thank you, John. His ears are glued to that crackling CB. 
He's got the lingo down to a T, and there's pride in his eyes when he looks up at me. Oh yeah, he's a truck driver's son. And give him a chance, he'd be in my shoes. But right now he's primed for an afternoon snooze, though he's determined to look out for Ruth. The road finally loves him away. And he's riding on diesel dreams down a highway that runs through his ever seen riding on diesel green and while my boy is dozing the memories flood in and I'm back in the cabin with my dad again telling myself how I'll be just like him don't seem all that long ago yet he is my own son thinking the same itching to get himself into the game he won't understand when I try to explain, son, it's not what it used to be. Cause he's riding on diesel in dreams down a highway that runs through his mind behind the wheel of the biggest rig he's ever seen. Riding on diesel in dreams. Behind the wheel of the biggest rig he's ever seen, riding on diesel in Thank you. Tell me, is there is there some sort of curfew for the bus to go or something, or is it cool to play a little longer? It's cool. It's Keep cool. Going. <laughs>